sometimes we feel like we're ABBA when we're playing with like a doobie sludge band from Finland. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Gypsy here with Cranium. This is for Clean and Sober Stoner and Monster Rift, Tales of the Heavy Underground. And I always put a T at the end of Monster Rift. I say Monster Rift. And I got to stop doing that. So thank you guys for being here so much. Thank uh, you for this is, us. Uh, if you would introduce yourselves. Uh, yeah. Individually, that'd be cool. Tell us what you do in the band. Yeah. Uh, my name is Andreas. I play guitar and I sing in Cranium. Yeah, and uh, I'm Yuval. I'm the drummer. Uh, I also sing a bit nowadays. Uh, yeah, started out like a year ago, year and a half. Yeah, so I'm Sounds starting like to sing more. So we do it together now. Yes. So you you brought the singing in much later because you guys have been. Together, what is it, uh, eight or ten years? It's more than ten years. Yeah, like, uh, we started in 2011. So, oh, okay. years, I think. Yeah. We, we, when people ask us how long we've been together, we always say too long. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I, I spent the last few days going through your material, and I really, really like this new album quite a lot. Yeah, it's it. I listened to the whole well EP, I guess, um, probably four times through over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Point of no return. A couple of songs really stood out to me. Uh, the first one that I had to go back and repeat and just stand there and listen to it again was "Things Have Changed," and yeah. then it goes right into "Search Eternal," and those two mm -hmm. pair really, really well. <clears throat> the and then the the melody in um, in a couple of the songs on there, I feel like the melodies became more singable and more intricate on this album as opposed to the ones before. Mm. Uh, who's writing the melodies? Well, that would be me most of the time, but um, I think I tend to to write on the guitar and then. Then we put it together in in the rehearsal space, uh, mm -hmm. and it feels like most of the times I I get a riff in my head, and uh, then I have to put something on top. I I never want to do like two guitars doing the same thing. So one guitar mm -hmm. is always playing a melody, and the other one is maybe playing the riff or the chords. Uh, and then on top of that, you want to do the, the vocals in a different melody and maybe harmonize them as well. So I think uh, for the last two records, that has been a big part of our sound. And I think that's something uh, we, we've only just found like since the, the record before this new one. Uh, it feels like a completely different band on the first two records. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And, you know, listening all the way through, I feel like the, you know, there's definitely some tones of like Caius and Uncle Acid throughout, mm. which is really fun. And I feel like, uh, dare I say it, even a little sound garden kind of feel yeah. to it. A lot a of people have been night. mentioning grunge about us. As yeah, well. so, yeah, a little bit of grunge. And and I'll say not too much grunge to, you know, I can't, I can't handle too much grunge. I'm from mm. that era. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But the sort of that grunge infusion works yeah. vocally. I, I I hear that. And the uh, on your the first album. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the first album is the 2016, or at least yeah. that's what I found. Okay, yeah. So um, it opens in a really heavy riff on um, that's explore the void, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Imperial Duster opens on a really, really wow. heavy riff that just just grabs, and then um, and it just keeps going with the second song, Meet on Mars. So uh, I liked how that one starts with the little audio clip of "Tune in, turn on, drop out." Yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's so iconically psychedelic. Uh, but yeah, I definitely feel like as I went through all the albums. This newest one 
is it's a little bit grown up, I guess. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. That's yeah. so we really appreciate that. Uh, and like I said <laughs> earlier, uh, that it that's really that that's really what Cranium is about. Like we've been, like I said, we've been together for too long or thirteen years or whatever. Mm-hmm. So so we we couldn't do the same thing we started out doing. Uh, just all repeating ourselves yeah. uh, and, and just, just like trying to get, become better songwriters, trying to be like, we always try to become better at everything we do. Uh, so, so, and, and I, I, I really enjoy this type of when people, like you say, when people bring up grunge and stuff like that, uh, like we love stoner rock. We love this whole uh, scene that we, we, been a part of for you know, for years now mm-hmm. uh, and we love it and it's so it's such a nice community everyone is so friendly like you doing the uh, blogs and interviews and reviewing stuff and and people are taking great photography and people are in great bands or engine gigs whatever uh but the music uh like we love it but we couldn't do the same thing over like you can only do a black sabbath riff that many times in yeah. <laughs> different ways so so yeah uh, and if people say that we're not like stone or rock i i kind of disagree because i think if if stone or rock is only going to be the same thing over over and over again it's going to kill itself so yeah i i love it when people say that we bring something new that we yeah. have the melodies grunge all these things yeah that's what we're aiming for to to do some something a little bit different inside like the the realm of heavy and psychedelic and stoner rock fast rock whatever you want to call it but we don't want to be another band that people are oh it sounds like black sabbath riffs i much rather hear people tell us that it sounds uh, sometimes it sounds like some garden and sometimes it even sounds like some pop music or or whatever because that's really what we're trying to do get away from the the like the archetype of uh, of what stoner rock used to be uh so i at least that's my goal to do do better music under the same moniker that isn't like another black sabbath riff off because we already have so many of those and and, and yes. great ones and, and great, great ones, ones too they're, they're great there's so many great like traditional stoner rock bands yeah. but but we really enjoy being part of the scene but doing something different yeah well i think you nailed it you know there's definitely in in my notes here i have that you have the black sabbath uh bind to what you're doing and that's that's good that's gold that's where we all we all start out that's my 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 comfort album is black sabbath's black sabbath you know yeah but you you aren't just living right there and i think that's that's wise it is such a friendly community. It is full of people who want to do things like what we're doing right now. They want to connect. It's, you know, you guys are definitely in that stoner doom vein, even with this newer album that is taking a slightly different direction. Mm-hmm. You still fit into that vein. You have the fuzz, you have the breakdowns. It's music that as at, over the weekend, I had friends over and I just kept, playing it and i kept asking are you guys still good with these jams do you want no we're good you know just um it's 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 comfortable and interesting and definitely definitely stoner so if people are saying you're not (laughs) i will tell them very gently it it depends on (laughs) what what you're comparing to i mean uh a lot of times in especially here in finland I feel like people generally think that stoner should be heavier than our music. And then we don't really fit into the like stoner doom category, even though we think we're part of it. But it's, it's just so hard. Sometimes we're, de- sometimes we feel like we're ABBA when we're playing with like a doomy sludge band from Finland. And we're like, Hey, have you heard about melodies? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and but it like music nerds, you just gotta love 
music nerds that like even even if they're saying we're not stone or rock like just the debate just to hear about like your first two albums were really doing stoner but now you're not like it's it, I I appreciate that so much. Like people actually listening up because we make music for ourselves. We make music that we enjoy. So if other people uh, even even gets like pissed off by it or or like get a reaction uh, and and people actually actually like take their time to listen to it and build an opinion, I think that's just such a huge honor. Yeah. Well, I I love that mentality because. Like you said, you're doing music for yourself because you want to do it. You have something in you that drives you to create it. And that's really what, you know, sort of fringe. And and I think stoner and doom and metal and fairy doom and all these things are there. We're moving. We're not Mm -hmm. as fringe as we used to be, but we still are a little. I think we always will be because it is music for ourselves. It isn't music meant you know we're not f- trying to follow an algorithm to to become a taylor swift movement no and i mean everybody understands what it's about where you're not going to be playing like the really big arenas or anything like that with this kind of music but i mean it's if you if you play for one person who likes it that's that's okay it's as good as playing for a hundred new people that likes it and i mean it's we really don't care if if it gets any bigger. Of course, that would be nice, but it's not our goal. Our goal is to keep doing more music, better music, evolve us as a band, and and make stuff we care about. If we if we if we wouldn't care about it, we wouldn't have been doing this for thirteen years. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. If it you know where I live, if it was just about booking shows and making money, I would just jump into all of these cover bands that are doing, you know, stuff from the seventies and eighties and now from the nineties. And yeah, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's expressing what, what you feel in a way that you can then translate. And it's, it's about your own personal development. And I think the, the quality of, your albums and again i'm just new to them like a week old (laughs) but the quality of the the progression of the albums they are um i noticed i noticed something in the progression i think the first album had much more material on it and as things have progressed there's less time you know this they're shorter eps but they're not that the music on the first album wasn't good but the there's like that you can see the musicianship has improved the 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 lyrics are you know more more grown up more evolved and i think that's wonderful and i think when when we when we have people tell us things like well you've you, you've changed you're not the same as you used to be and when they mean that in a negative way uh, that's because maybe they're limited in their interests but if if everyone always did that, you know, we wouldn't have all the material Bowie put out. Um, and I'm going to get tomatoes thrown at me by Scott, but same with Bob Dylan. You know, <laughs> if Bob Dylan had stayed just protest yeah. full, you know, Woody Guthrie covers, we'd mm. be missing so much of yeah. what he had to offer the world. So good job. You're in Finland. Yep. Are you are you playing shows? We've had quite a busy year already. Uh, we released the new album in February uh, yeah. and we played like the Nordic countries. Uh, at some point I did like uh, digital uh, ads online uh, and you could see like the map. Uh, if you if you if you play a show in nor- northern Sweden, uh, then you you try to get get like uh, 100 kilometers around that to like get it to reach people uh so at some point when i did that almost like the whole northern all the nordic countries were were covered uh because we played from like east to west uh north to south a lot this spring Mm -hmm. uh like almost 
every other weekend, every third weekend yeah. or something yeah. like that. We went, we've been to Norway, Sweden and Finland. And then uh, now just a few weeks ago, we came home from, we went down to Europe, uh, like around, uh, we played Denmark, Germany, Belgium, Not Netherlands. Uh, now, just like a few <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, and now we're actually sitting waiting for him to become a dad for the first time. Uh, so so oh. the fall is going to be kind of... Yeah. Uh, we're going to wait until... When, or, but we've already played almost uh, as many shows this year as we usually do on a yeah. full year. Yeah. So I think last last year we had... we I think we did 26 shows and that's quite a lot for... I mean, we're happy yeah. musicians, and we have we have work to to go to um, other obligations to to take care of. So so for us to be able to play 27, 26 shows in a year is, is quite a lot. And I think it is. so. Far, this year we played over twenty shows, and we still uh, y- yes, I'm gonna have some some time off, take a little parental leave. But we'll be back in November, I guess. We have a couple of, of gigs booked. So I think we'll have maybe four or five gigs uh, later on this, this year. Uh, so we still got stuff to do. And I think we're going to take this time off to maybe, I mean, we'll rehearse and stuff like that. So so I think we'll be focusing on writing new material. And that's kind of what I've been doing now during my summer break, just playing a lot of guitar. And waiting for the kiddo to arrive, but <laughs> you never know when when it's time. Should be tomorrow, but I guess it's going a little bit over time. Exciting. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. That's Thanks. that yeah, there is nothing like that in the whole world. And I you're gonna hear this again and again. The truest thing anyone will ever tell you is enjoy it because it goes so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it a so. couple of times already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're gonna yeah. hear it again. And it is. It is. It's. There's nothing more true in in all mm. of the universe. I, my yeah. kids are grown. I'll be. You know. Maybe in the next <clears throat> three four years, I might become a grandmother. Really looking forward yeah. to that. It is the blink of an eye. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys are are busy. You're you're able to get out there and play. Yeah. I mean, when you're. We- I'm I'm curious because you know I'm just sort of exploring as much as I can with you know Finnish rock and all that. Um, mm. It seems like you guys are a little different than what I usually come across for stoner, you know, doom from Finland. Yeah. Well, back that, to oh gosh, off the top of my head, uh, probably can't think of them at the moment. There there are many. Do you have <laughs> any favorites? Uh, there's a lot of great bands yeah. from Finland. Uh, it really just, is. The writing uh, is great. King of None, uh, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Played, we played. We played in Helsinki with them in the beginning yeah. of the summer. Uh, uh, I really like Third Trip. Uh, what are great bands do we I'm have? Yeah, I'll check them out. Good friends of our, ours. We are we were trip. Yeah. we released our first uh, like vinyl together with them back yeah. years and years ago. Uh, we did like a split that's single cool. together, and so that's how we found them. And and they 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 also keep yeah. evolving all the time. Well, I mean, I think the 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 Weedians trip to Finland really covers a lot of great bands from from yeah. Finland. We I think we played or know most of them. Finland isn't that big, but you talked a little little bit about us maybe being different uh i would uh, think that it has to do with the fact that we are swedish speaking Finns, uh small minority so like five percent of the finnish population is swedish speaking we're 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 Finns, but we're swedish speaking uh so a small minority so we tend to like lean a little bit more to uh the swedish side of things yeah something a little brighter yeah, uh, and I mean, so, most of my influences, like these bands that I've listened to and, and look up to uh, in our genre, is from Sweden. I like a lot of Finnish bands, but somehow I find that the Swedes uh, tend to be a bit more interesting. And I think that 
since we have the like shared cultural background as well with Sweden, uh, we tend to lean a little bit more to to the Swedish sound, maybe. Right. I interviewed Greenleaf recently. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, Love and that. that was that new album is remarkable. I it's I think it's going to be one of my favorite of the entire year. Yeah. And while it is he- like like you guys, it is there's heavy moments to it. It's it's solidly rock. Yeah. You know, just solidly rock, and it's it's one that I could pass on to my my dad, who is you know definitely seventies prog mm-hmm. rock. Yeah. You know, like my dad can't explore metal like I can. It's just not he's just not com- as comfortable as me, and I think that's partly a generational thing. But like I could pass you guys on to him, mm-hmm. and and he'd be able to get into it. And I think that's it's- kind of what we want to do. And uh, I like we talked about. Cranium having a lot of melodies, and I think that's one of the things we've kind of taken from the Swedish bands. We don't want to be so heavy. We want to have like good melodies and hooks and and almost like pop music, but also with heavy riffs and with light stuff. Because it yes. feels like I really don't have a lot of patience for for just heavy music anymore. I mean, like, I want to mix, like, the Black Sabbath stuff with Pink Floyd stuff, with, like, pop stuff, with with everything, and just make it our thing. And we talked a lot about yes. that as well, that you can't be, like, it's hard, it's really hard to be really, really heavy if you're really heavy all the time. Like, it, it's, all, we're almost, like, okay. tuning, we're, we're putting in light stuff so that the heavy stuff will sound even heavier, or it's, like, it... it at least for me, uh, like to stand at a show, uh, it's nice to just be like washed with the tone and the heavy and everything. But but if you get a breather once in a while, then then the heavy when the heavy stuff comes back, it's gonna be so much heavier again. 